Um, I mean, I, they're just, I couldn't do this without it. Right. I mean, there's still some things we have to change by hand because the, it, the, the montage won't talk to it, and nor will the hammer. That won't talk and to you're either. leaving both of them basically, you're not in like in any kind of a combi mode, you're just in basic program mode. In and no, we go to another mode, and what I do, I change them by hand, we put them into, into their own little patches and I change them by hand. Which for the montage on the what? Uh, the hammer. Oh, yeah, no, right. And obviously the, uh, the Memotron, it, it, it won't, you know, you, we do that, we do that by hand. There's a few, and the, I know obviously the many, but basically I love that psychology, but it's hard to explain to you sometimes, don't think what I'm standing in front of is where the sound's coming from, you know, because it, it it really isn't, you know, and uh, and that uh, you know that confuses an, an awful lot of people. But Eric, Eric and I have worked together. He's um, great studio engineer. That's what he really is. He's, he does all my studio stuff. He's he's a very bright boy. He did all Lord of the Rings and things like. Oh, did he? Oh, he's a clever boy. He's very clever. Good keyboard player too. Nice. And. Uh, He's one of those annoying things. When some of you come in, I go, well, here's the book, and you go, I don't need that. He's one of those, do you know what I mean? He's one of those really uh, wonderfully annoying people that goes, oh, and he loves the project. He wants someone to do something. I mean, we, I know from friends of ours we've got at Paul uh, and at Rowe, they've got, they go, how, how did you get him to do that? <laughs> one of those cases, you didn't know it wasn't supposed to not, yeah, so. and he does a lot of that. You like puzzles, don't you? I adore them. Yeah. You got one of my babies, this one. I adore this puppy. I have the, the, the XT, the rack. Right. It's got some good, good fun sounds on it. Uh, we, we, what we do, as, as Eric's probably told you, is we do um, very much... This is the shape of the rig that I've, I'm comfortable with, which means that I've got lots of options. One of the hardest things is doing a route map of where you've got to go. It's like when we first put sounds together for this tour, we choose the instruments we want to do to make up the, you know, what we're going to use. Mm -hmm. And then we spend a bit of time up at my, my store where we just set everything up and then we get all the sounds together that we need. Uh, well, I tell Eric the sounds that we need and he helps me put them all, to, all together. And then we put them on the instruments. But then, it's, the problem comes sometimes, you come to rehearsals and suddenly I'll find that I need to get from one sound to the other, but unfortunately the two sounds I need, one of them's over there and the other one's over right. here. So that's called, uh, Eric's normally spotted it before I ever goes, might have to move that up to the, and that, and so you have to start shoving everything around so that you can actually get from A to B. Well, even with the, with, with the psychological router, there have got to be some things that are rocks. I mean, obviously enough, these are rocks, those aren't going yeah. anywhere. You don't, you're not doing mini mods, are you doing mini mods with these? No, no mini mods at all. No. Okay, so that so those are rocks, and yeah. whenever you have to play them, your your basically what sounds comes yeah. up is. I guess this is probably a rock too. Is that like nope. always basically an organ, or that's just a keyboard that's nope. masquerading as an organ? I mean, it is all organs that we're using. It, but it can do other things. But it is all organs that we are using. So basically, those are the only really the two rocks, and, then, and this is the main thing you have to map out first because they can't move. But then at any point in time, you could be anywhere in the rig playing we anything are. in yeah. the rig. But yeah. it's actually rooting it is sometimes quite. Tricky. It's a nightmare. And then there'll be other things. When you come to rehearse, and, and all the like when we're first rehearsing, there are some sounds that stand alone, perfect, but when the band's playing, things you go, are they not strong enough or too strong or whatever? And I'll turn around to Eric and go, got anything we're not using <laughs> that we can throw in? And he'll invariably go, no, you're using it. But sometimes we, but there's always, between us, you know, I like to think, I mean, apart from us, Eric and I have been really close friends. I think we're, we're sort of reasonably good as a team because Eric does, being a player as well, he understands, you know, yes, I understand why you need that sound to be stronger. What we could do is we could get rid of something in the rack that actually doesn't do a busting lot, and we could use that to do that. There's always a solution, isn't there, somewhere, mm. somewhere along the line. Do you find it, it, takes, it does take a while to fine tune it? Do you, do you find yourself in combi mode with any of these things? I mean, I think you've yeah. there's really? Yeah. With all this duplication? Yeah. Just, yeah, it's just because you found a sound with another exactly. sound, and then yeah. you're paging through the combis on this, yeah. and that does it. Oh, that yeah, piano yeah, with that, that strings and that pad, and that's yeah. fabulous, and well, we then, can tweak that pad. But then it will always, you know, it will always be adding more on, onto it as well. You know, everything's kind of layered upon layers within a palette. 
Are you purest sonically, though, when it comes to, for example, the, the actual tone of the organ? I don't think you are, but I'm just making sure. No, it doesn't just come from there. It can be a rompler oh, out we, of here. Oh, we, or... we, we, there's, yeah, it's all sure. making you, you, you never have, like, one sound go. It's never. always combination. combination. And the other thing as well is with the, with the rat. I mean, Eric, uh, and he's right, too. I mean, after this tour, we go back and there'll be maintenance on everything that will be done. The minis will go down to our great guy in, in, in South London, <laughs> who's the only guy I'll trust with any, who for him the world stopped in 1974, so he's a fine, and he's absolutely brilliant, isn't he? Mm. The, the, the doctor, the vicar, the Dutch record. How many have you got? Tim, nine. <laughs> <laughs> do you rotate them, or is, or is, this, yes, is this just like we do uh, rotate. thing one and thing two? No, we, we we've got four out here, haven't we? We've got four out here, and two, because they, they're not built for out, out on the road. I was, in fact, I was talking to Michelle, my Bob's daughter, mm -hmm. saw her, yeah, she, she came to see Michelle, and uh, she said, how are they ho holding up? And because uh, Dad's always said, they, they were never meant for that. Right? I said, amazingly, really. Uh, you know, and, and it's, it, there's an element of, of old school, which I remember what it was like back in the early 70s when I was out touring, when you switched everything on, and it was a matter of, well, first of all, let's see what lights come on, let's see what's actually working, and let's see what we can do. Um, but they've, they've been very good. That one over there, which is a 72, I think, that still suffers a bit from RF, doesn't it? Yeah. If there's RF in the building, it gets a little bit unhappy. That's two mods in this front spot? Is it the same, it's the same mods in the No, that one, this kind of knob that that one doesn't have under the... Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that was, they were fiddled with, but we, we don't use them. Pulse with mod, pulse with read, oscillator, three yeah. LFO. Yeah, it, it, we don't use it. It's because it, it never worked properly, any of it. They, but uh, Bob, Bob had a look at them all for me at one stage, but there was one that the, the old um, Tim Warhead did that Bob actually gave up on, didn't he? Now, I had one that was really bad. Bob, Bob took it for me and, and got away and said, no. And I gave it to Tim and he did it. And I took it back and played it at Bob's 70th birthday party in New York. And Bob came over to me and he went, the mini mode, I said, and was not fixed for us. Yeah. He said, "What have you done?" I said, "Went to a guy called Tim Warhead." He said, "Can I look?" I said, "Yeah." And he took the back and looked in there, and he was, you know, what Bob was like. He went, "Ah, I see." I'm thinking, "What the hell was he looking at?" Him? And he, went, he went, "This guy's good." He said, "How's oh, the guy?" I'd have him like a shot. He said, what he, I said, what's he done? He said, I know you wouldn't understand, Rick. He said, very clever. I went, okay. And it works, doesn't it? That one, yeah. I was working with him at Kurzweil in the 80s when he was there. And yeah. I had I had one of them. My mini is, uh, I remember Ron Rivera in Boston. Yeah, yeah. a bunch of mods. So I had the LFO4 put in. I had the sink put in along with yeah. the vernier tuning. And yeah. those little lovely knobs that take the filter and blow yeah. up and knock it up to oscillator. Yeah, yeah. And I t told him about it and told him I would bring it in if he would sign it. He said, I don't sign minis. And I said, well, I'm not bringing it in if you don't. This no. went back and forth for a minute he and a half. He wouldn't even sign mine. I brought it in. I just Did left it there it? one day. Just to Dave, Bob, really? Moke, and Joy. I just took it to Ken Rich yesterday. No, he never, he never, never signed. I got, I got a rare Jim Marshall. Because Jim was a good friend of mine. I got a Jim Marshall to sign. Jim said, I'll never sign anything. But he, he signed. He did sign a... Uh, Something for me, bless him. But uh, no, it's um, you know, the, so they'll go back. So when all this stuff goes back, it will all be heavily serviced. I mean, one of the major problems we had was it's always been monitoring, and I had uh, for a long time, and they've they've gone there. There's a, a wonderful company in, in Italy called Gem, Gem sure. Music. Sure, sure. And uh, what was that ki wonderful keyboard? That it was. S2, S3, Pro Mega. Oh, the Pro Mega piano. Oh, oh great. Just a piano. fantastic. We loved it, didn't we? Yeah. But the nice trumpet feel too. was so. And, and, and a great motor trumpet sound. But, but, but dreadfully unreliable, weren't they? And they, were, and, and they didn't write MIDI very much, did they? Right. Right. Variety. And Eric, um, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. He liked the sound but hated the instruments. Yeah. That, right? <laughs> And, but, of, but of course, you can't get anybody to repair them these days. There's nobody around. I, I, I love the unique sounds. I became very good friends with the people at, um, in, in Italy at uh, Germany. And they, they had a sound company called Lem, mm -hmm. L-E-M, which was mainly for discos and things like that. 
and they said to me, when I was looking for the most, this is way back, right, we go back to the turn of the, turn of the century, and, I, and they, they said to try it, yeah, try it, so I tried, and they were really good, self-powered, nice unit, and the Lems did well, didn't they, for quite some time. Well, they were fantastic. And, and, and Too then, heavy. Yeah, it was just um, a, a three-way in a single cabinet or sub-satellite sort of thing. Like uh, no, we had we had 18-inch um, uh, subs, um, yeah, well. they, they but they, they were, I mean, they were nearly twice the weight of these, and oh, these aren't no. particularly light. And these um, are just 12s? It's just a seven, yeah, it's 12s yeah. on those, 12s but they, 18s but in the bottom. They, they did really well, but of course, eventually they give up, you know, they've been slung around and they, uh, you know, lasted much longer than I ever thought they would, so when, when it came to getting this together, I had a big concert in London to do and looking at, 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 at uh, cabinet, what to, what to have. Um, I mean, general music no longer in, exists, as you know, which is, and, uh, and Lem have gone, obviously. So, uh, so a great friend of mine, I mean, I always listen to this this fella because I know nothing. <laughs> and, uh, and we have a, a great friend called Mr. B in Barthel, and, and uh, I recommend they said, try the EVs. And uh, so we, we got a set of this to um, a, a, a sort of trial out, and I just loved them. Yeah. Absolutely loved them to bits. Absolutely, really, really so good. We had tried a few other bits and pieces, mm. but these, the mm. you know, that's what I want to hear. They're, ver they're, they're very popular on my forum. I'm the founder and moderator of Keyboard Magazine's forum. Uh, uh, I've been running for about 60 years. Yeah. And uh, this this is one of the ones that the people talk about the most. It's, it's, to be the it's, most reliable it, and the well, it, they it, like the most. The Yamaha's the seats go okay and the, Everybody's off on the K8s and the K10s and, and QSCs, but they seem to get a lot of people. It's, yeah. it's what, more full range. Yeah. You want to hit because yeah, you do want to hear full full range because we hit some pretty low stuff. No. <laughs> we do hit some pretty low stuff. That's pretty hard. Stuff. Have you ever been tempted to, to try the IEM thing? Or uh, <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. Because, you see, how I, I'm old school. How I work is, in my mind, is, it's like, cool. okay, what can I hear? What I can't hear, give me a little bit. If I can't hear the snare drum enough, or I can't hear the bass, give me a little bit of bass and snare. If I can hear it, I don't want to know. So you're getting the, basically a band monitor feed from there, and then your feed from there. Is any Correct. of your... Nope. So, okay, so no, church and state are completely yeah. and totally separate yeah. for all and it makes purposes. life very, make it very easy because the players go, yeah, I can hear that, that's, that's fine, and that's what I want to, want to hear. And, that, and in ears, I mean, the one thing that really annoys me about in ears is trying to talk to anybody. <laughs> no doubt. You know, you turn around to Lee, you know, or Lee or to, or to Trevor or to John or, or to Lou and say, oh, guys, can, you, uh, can we just run through that bit? And I go, how can you get any feel on stage? And there's been a few occasions where Trev's just thrown his away, hasn't he? And so has Lee, to some extent. You, you can't, you've got to get a feel. You can't possibly get this. And they say, oh, they yeah, can put some of the, the atmosphere into the... Sorry, no. It's, 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 it's well, rubbish. Pete, I hate them. Pete Townsend is a wedge guy, same thing. Yeah. He is all wedges, you know. He yeah, I mean, it, it. you know, it's... <laughs> Now, I can remember the days when I first started out, there was no such thing as wedges or monitoring. There's a few oh, couple sorry, of web columns at the side that the, that the singer sang through, and you just made sure you heard everybody, and you balanced yourself to hear everybody, and that's how you did it. I mean, it's just, now I'm, I'm getting old, but uh, <laughs> it, started, okay. it started to get all this, this in here. One, there are a couple of things... I can't be dealing with it. Yeah? I can't be dealing with it.